Hey there everybody, this is Jeff and we're going to do a how-to guide or video tutorial series on XBMC and automated content which will include SAB and ZBD Plus, SickBeard, Couch Potato, and Headphones. Uh, this tutorial series will cover installing and configuring all of these pieces of software so that they work together and you get automatic downloads of TV shows, movies, and music pushed into your XBMC whenever the content becomes available without you having to do anything yourself. Today we're going to start with XBMC and this particular uh, tutorial video will be installing and configuring XBMC itself and then we'll follow on additional videos with the rest of the software. XBMC is a graphical interface for your home theater PC. It runs on a variety of hardware Windows, Mac, and Linux, as well as some embedded devices. Just as an example, there's a version of XBMC that you can run on an Apple TV 2 and use that as your interface talking to content somewhere else. XBMC supports skins, so you can customize the interface. There are a, a bunch of different skins available for you to choose from in the forums, as well as off of the XBMC site itself. And you can customize it by creating your own skin if you wanted to. One of the really cool features is that as you have all of this content, the data, say TV show episodes, uh, movie files, etc., XPMC will automatically scrape your content for metadata. And what that means is when you put down a movie file or a TV show episode and make it available to XPMC's library, it will go out and look at IMDB or the TVDB and grab the cast information, the plot, all sorts of useful details about that particular uh, show or movie. It also supports box covers and fan art images, so it ends up looking very nice. And you'll see a couple screenshots in the next slide. There's an extensive add-on capability. You can write your own add-ons if you choose to, or you can just select from the existing add-ons. And there are add-ons for YouTube, uh, Hulu, Amazon Instant Videos, and many others. And there's an active community of developers and users at forum.xbmc.org. And I strongly recommend that you go there and visit, especially if you're new to XBMC, and you want to check out your hardware and see if it's compatible. There's an actual hardware forum, uh, as well as additional add-ons, other third-party software. Lots of great discussions there. So here's some screenshots of, of what some of the different interfaces can look like. These are taken randomly by me from... Uh, different skins, just trying to show a good uh, overview of what some of the content looks like. You'll see in the top left is a TV show, uh, a screen grab of the actual episode itself, a little plot information, when it was aired, etc. On the top right, you're seeing a fixed fan art background image and then box covers for all of the movies in the particular library. Bottom left, a completely different view of looking at your movies, and we would call this maybe a detail view. In this case, Star Trek's box cover, and then all the details, the director, who starred in it, what the plot is, and even categorization like uh, genres, uh, action, adventure, sci-fi, etc. And then on the bottom right, uh, one view of uh, many that's showing thumbnails of cover art for your music library. Okay, so this all looks good, but how do you get the content? The answer is Usenet, uh, and if you're a veteran internet user, you've been around a long time, you probably know what Usenet is, but if not, just consider Usenet to be a global uh, forum or a news group system. Unlike the BitTorrent network, or torrenting, Usenet does not involve peer-to-peer uh, -peer sharing at all, and you can optionally encrypt your traffic when you're talking to your Usenet server. Content is posted to Usenet from all over the world by various individuals, who upload TV show episodes, movies, music, etc. But the way that Usenet is structured, manually downloading this content can be quite uh, a lot of work. And so there's lots of tools that have been created to automate this. And the specific programs we're going to cover in this tutorial series really make downloading all this content easy. And we'll get to that, as I said, as we move forward in the various videos. So now we're going to install and basically configure XBMC. And there's really not a lot to this component at the moment. As we do all of the other content creation uh, tools, we'll go back and tweak XBMC a little bit. 
Some pre-work for you before you do this. You want to figure out your file and folder structure before installing XBMC. If you use the forms, there's lots of good recommendations there as well as the wiki and kind of a getting started manual that exists. But you want to figure out a naming convention. How do you want your TV show episodes to be named? How do you want your movies to show up, etc.? Figure that out beforehand because when you configure all of this software, you're going to want to input that information. Create the folders and directory structure that you're going to use beforehand. <clears throat> and I'll show you some of those details in this video. I'll show you the file structure that we're going to use for these samples. Also, you probably want to ensure that you have compatible hardware if you're not installing on you know, just a basic Windows PC. If you're trying to use a, a low-end embedded device uh, or something that you put together, just check the forums, make sure that the hardware is supported. You can, you'll find that you can build a dedicated XBMC machine for a couple hundred dollars, and you don't need a full high-end computer just to run the XBMC interface. Okay. So we're going to stop slides here and I'm going to actually go and install XBMC and uh, walk through that with you. And then we'll look a little bit at the configuration. Um, I've actually downloaded all the software we're going to use in these tutorials, but for right now we're just going to play with uh, XBMC itself. So we'll click on that. This um, installer is very simple. There's not a lot to it. You're really just going to click next through everything. And then it's going to go ahead and install. While it's doing that, I want to show you one small thing. We're going to go to xbmc.org skins. I just want you to see that there are various skins for you to look at and see how some of them work. Uh, the default skin is called Confluence. So what I'm going to show you is an alternative skin called Aeon. Uh, and this skin is really designed around uh, fan art. And so if we just look at some of the images here while we're letting XBMC install, um, you can see that it's it's heavily stylized uh, and gives you the opportunity to, you know, enjoy all the fan art from your various content, put it in, use it in, in lots of different places. That was where the picture that I grabbed that I showed you earlier. Um, just a cool view of your main menu in XBMC here. And again, uh, this is only one example. There are lots of different skins available. And another view of your movies where you see a list of the actual movies and a box cover image and you'll notice the background has also changed as well. Alright, let's see uh, if XBMC is done here. It is. So we're going to go ahead and run XBMC for the first time. Now there's, there's no content on this system right now, so when we run this it's going to be basically blank. But it'll give us a good start. Uh, hang on, I think I need to get rid of this. There we go. Alright, <clears throat> so here's the default XBMC interface, and again, there's there's no content in here right now. I'm going to scroll over here to Settings, under System, and a couple things that I want to look at. The first one is in Appearance, International, uh, I want to make sure that we're set to USA. Uh, in this case, I want 12 hour. The default uh, is Australia 24 hour or 12 hour and what happens is that you uh, <laughs> you get uh, temperature display in Celsius and not Fahrenheit so I, for because I'm in the US I obviously want to see it in Fahrenheit so I wanted to double check that uh, and then let's see under video uh, library I just want to make sure that update library on startup has been checked all right because we're going to use that uh, pretty consistently okay so that's pretty much it for this video. We've installed XPMC. Uh, there's really not a lot of configuration to do at the moment. We'll go through and do more of that later. So I think I'll leave you here at the end of this video. The next video we're going to talk about uh, installing and configuring uh, SAB and ZBD+, which I'm going to just call SAB from now on. So we'll see you in the next video.